Hey guys and welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to show you how to polish your car. Today I'm going to be using my Roops LHR 15 ES dual action polisher to get this done. I'm going to show you how to do this on a quarter panel and you can replicate this exact same process and do the entire car to bring it back to life. Today I'm going to be working on the Volkswagen Golf again and I already went ahead and gave the car a wash. Now after that we're going to have to do a whole bunch of steps in order to bring the paint back to life. Alright, so I'm first going to talk to you guys and make a diagram of essentially what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you basically a zoomed in version of what the paint looks like. So we're going to start off right here. This is the metal of the car. Okay? That's where all the paint, primer, and everything is going to get laid down onto. So that's your metal. After that, you're going to have your, your primer. Say that's your primer right there. All that, that's primer. This is going to be the foundation of what the next layers of paint are going to stick to. It's going to make sure that the paint that's going to be up here is going to be able to stick very well to the metal. After that, you're going to have your base coat. So say that. That's your base coat. Say it's red. That's your base coat. Now on old cars, this is all they had. They had the metal, they had the primer, and then they had a base coat. They never had any kind of clear coat to really make the car look shiny and nice. Ever since the 90s, they've been putting clear coat on almost every single car on the road. What the clear coat does is it protects the layers underneath from oxidizing from the sun. Because it's UV resistant, it can protect all this from oxidizing and looking like crap. The way they spray this down is going to be with a paint gun. And because it's very thin, because it's not perfectly smooth, when you spray it, you might have orange peel or texture when you're spraying it. And you're going to have that for every single one of these layers, but it's only evident for the clear coat. So say this is the clear coat, you're going to have, pretend this is very zoomed in. So this is essentially your texture. This and this. Now when you have scratches, you're going to have little gouges essentially everywhere, little V's, little cuts in the paint. Now all these will be able to be polished out, no problem, because they're only in the clear coat. If they're deep, and go into the base coat, you're still gonna have this scratch after you polish this out. The only way to remove this, because it's down here in the base coat, is you're gonna have to go ahead and either repaint the panel, or you're gonna have to come down here, sand it all down until this part right here, and then you're gonna have to spray down another layer of clear. That's very difficult. So what a lot of people do here, is they'll get touch up, or something like that, to fill this in. They'll put red base coat and clear coat, they'll mix it together and they'll basically fill in a deep scratch. It's going to look better than this scratch alone, but it's not gonna look as good as the clear coat. So what I'm getting to is what we're gonna be doing today. So today we're gonna get rid of all the scratches and everything that are in here. So on a car that just has swirl marks, all that you're gonna have is little scratches up top on the surface, but you're gonna have lots of them. So when you look at the car, it's gonna diffuse the light not very nicely. So when you polish a car, the way you make it look fantastic is you're trying to remove every single one of these little scratches. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to get rid of the texture, so these big hills and lumps, and we're going to also get rid of these little scratches. So if you were to just go ahead and use a cutting compound um, and your polisher, you'll be able to remove those little scratches, no problem. But the thing is, you're still going to have that texture in there. So in order to get rid of it, you're going to have to go with a very abrasive um, sandpaper. Now a lot of people start off with 1500 grit sandpaper. 1500, zero, zero. 1500 grit sandpaper to start. And what that's going to do, it's going to get rid of the tops and it's going to chop off the peaks of the, uh, of the orange peel. Now when it does this, it's going to look a lot better when you smooth this out. And the best way that you're going to get a perfect finish is if you get rid of all of it. So you come down here and you sand down all of this. So all of that is gone. And if you could tell, look, we've only got a little couple scratches that are still in there. And those were fairly deep. This one here, you're not going to get rid of, but again, that just depends on how deep the scratch is. Now, after that's gone, when you're sanding down and you're using a 1500 grit, you're going to be making little scratches in there. And that's going to be very uniform, like that, all across the paint. And the way you get rid of that is with 3000 grit sandpaper, and then it chops it down to there. And then you're basically working your way down to get rid of all the little scratches that you're putting in the paint. So after you do the 1500, you're going to go to 3000 grit sandpaper, and then you're going to cut the paint, and then you're going to polish it. That's very small, but whatever, don't worry about that writing. <laughs> um, you're going to then get rid of all those scratches with the 3000, and then the scratches that you made with the 3000 that are even smaller, the tiny little ones all across the paint, you're going to get rid of that, 
by cutting the paint, and then finally you're gonna get rid of those scratches you just made by using polish. Now it's a fairly extensive process, but the thing is, after you do all of this, the paint is gonna look fantastic. Now depending on how bad your car is, you might not be able to get rid of all the deep scratches, but you are gonna be able to make your paint look a whole lot better than how it started. Let's get right into it and let's start off by claying the paint. So to begin this process, I'm going to be using a clay bar along with some spray wax to remove any contaminants that are stuck on the paint. It's very important to remove them before polishing so we don't embed more scratches into the paint. So spray the panel you're working on with spray wax to allow the clay bar to glide over the paint. Then flatten out a piece of clay in your hands and apply it on the paint. You should be doing straight motions when you're using the clay bar. So you can go up and down or left to right but don't ever do swirly motions with it because it has the potential to scratch and damage the paint even more. Keep claying the paint until you can't hear anything when you glide the clay over the paint. If you can still hear something, that means there's still contaminants on there that need to be removed. Grab a microfiber towel to remove any spray wax so the panel will be ready for the next step. The next step is to get rid of the deeper scratches all in one shot. I'm going to be using some 3000 grit sandpaper and show you how to first do it by hand and then by machine. You can do it all by hand, however it'll take about 10 times longer than if you were to use a machine to get this done. I'm using sandpaper on a sanding block to remove some of the orange peel. Now if your main concern is to remove all of the orange peel along with the scratches, start off first with 1500 grit sandpaper and then move up to 3000 grit sandpaper. But the orange peel isn't a big concern for me on the Gulf, so I'm going to jump straight to the 3000. So when you're sanding the paint, spray the panel with water and do small strokes at a time with the sanding block. Keep doing these overlapping passes over the entire panel until you can see the orange peel is getting removed. Do you see how some of the parts of the paint are glossy and some are matte? That means that we've started to remove some of the orange peel from the paint, but it's not completely gone yet. We removed some of the peaks in the paint, but we haven't leveled it completely. Keep sanding the paint until it all looks matte and uniform. Just to speed things up, I'm going to throw a 3000 grit sandpaper disc on my Roops dual action polisher to save me a lot of time. Just like sanding it by hand, we need to spray the panel first with water. Do overlapping passes on the panel until all of the peaks of the orange peel are removed. You should take your time with this and not rush it because the faster you go, the faster the polisher will sand down your paint. Wipe the area down with a microfiber towel to pick up all of the residue that was removed from sanding. The next step is going to be cutting the paint. So we need to remove the sanding marks that the 3000 grit sandpaper made in the paint. Put a microfiber cutting pad on your polisher along with some Meguiar's M105 cutting compound to remove those scratches. Make sure to massage the compound into the pad to make sure the entire pad is dressed with the fluid. Dab some extra fluid onto the pad and start polishing the panel. Just like before, do overlapping passes to make sure that the entire panel gets the same amount of cutting. You should be polishing the panel to remove all the scratches that the sanding disc created. By the end of this, it should look very consistent and uniform. When you buff off the excess polish on the paint, you should already notice a huge difference from before. The crazy thing is that this can still be improved even more. After cutting the paint, we need to finish it up by polishing it. So for this part, I'm going to use a Meguiar's microfiber polishing pad paired with Meguiar's M205 polishing compound. This is going to make the paint shine like you wouldn't believe. Rub the polish into the pad to make sure that the pad can polish the paint easily. Do the same overlapping passes like we did earlier, top to bottom and then left to right. Repeat these passes until you think all the scratches are gone. Grab another microfiber towel to buff off the excess and then check your results. To give the paint a bit of protection, I like putting on some Meguiar's paint sealant to not only make the paint bead water and dirt much better, but to also fill in any tiny scratches that we weren't able to remove from before. The way that I like to apply it is first in circular motions and then apply it vertically followed up by horizontally. Finally, because I'm super OCD, I'll go in the opposite circular motion once before just to guarantee that every square inch of the panel is covered. Let it dry for 10 minutes and then come back to buff off any excess. Remove any masking tape you put on the car and you're done. Take a look at how the water reacts when it comes in contact with the paint. It beads right off as if the panel was never wet. You can do this exact same procedure for your entire car and you'll get unbelievable results. Now just for a recap, this is how you get the paint to look perfect. So step one, give the car a wash. Step two, use a clay bar to remove the surface contaminants. Step three, use high grit sandpaper to remove the deep scratches. Step four, 
Cut the paint to remove the sandpaper scratches. Step 5. Polish the paint to remove the cutting scratches. Step 6. Seal the paint to hide any polishing scratches. Step 7. Stare at your nice and new shiny car. Now just something to note is that if you guys are polishing your paint, if you guys keep cutting down the paint more and more and more just so you get all the scratches out, you might be going down into the paint too deep to the point that you're going to be removing all of your clear coat. Now you don't want that, so keep in mind if some scratches are very deep, it's in your best interest to leave them alone. Like right now as it stands, I probably got a good 95, 90-95% of all the scratches on this hood removed. They're all gone. Now those 5-10% to of the other ones, the really deep ones, if you go if you keep polishing those out and keep trying to get them out of the paint, sometimes you might be able to get them out depending on how deep it is. But you might catch yourself in a catch-22 when you're into that position and you go through the clear coat and then you burn your paint. You're going to have the intention to make the paint look fantastic. But the thing is, if you go too deep, you're going to be basically going in the opposite direction. So it's not only going to go through the clear coat, you're going to be able to see that. The, the base coat underneath is going to oxidize faster. The clear coat around that spot will oxidize also faster. It'll start to peel, but you're probably gonna have to get a respray at that point too. So take it easy, don't go too deep. If you're looking for a show car finish, you're probably not gonna get that out of your OEM paint. I'm not saying it's impossible, but the thing is, it is very difficult to do that with OEM paint. If you're looking for a show car finish, the only way to get that is to get an aftermarket paint job. And that's where they keep on layering more clear coat and more clear coat and more clear coat on top of your already existing base coat. That's the only way that you're going to get that very deep, perfect shine. Unfortunately, this Golf does not have a paint job like that, but with a little bit of love, it could definitely turn around and this paint could look amazing. With a little bit of time, patience and skill, you can really make the paint do a full 180. Other than the few dents in the metal, the rear quarter panel looks a lot better than before. You can see how much of a difference there really is between the panel we polished and our test panel. By doing those steps to all of the paint on your car, you're going to be able to go from how my car looked to how it looks like now. And as you can tell, it looks flawless. It looks amazing. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, please post them down in the comment section below and I'd be happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Nice. Dude, if you offer that, it will, it will like go crazy over it.